Cage Minds, Micah Frankel, interviewing today on Skype, Syed Awad, Bellator 101, six days away, lightweight tournament, quarter finalist. Thank you for the time. How are you feeling? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks for the interview. I'm feeling great, brother. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Six days away. How you feeling? How's the weight? Uh, weight's cool. You know what I mean? I, um, I think I'm cutting in a little bit more this time than I usually do. I added a little bit more muscle um, the past over the past six months, so uh, or five months, I'll say. And um, it, it's going good, though. It's going good. I always make weight, and uh, it should be good. Adding the muscle, was there a specific reason? Anything in your last fight with Rickles, why you wanted to do that? What, what is it? No, it's more about, um, when, it was weird when I put my hand, I couldn't do, I couldn't roll and I couldn't um, hit mitts, but I was able to lift without my hand hurting, even though my hand was broken. So I was like, the only thing I could do right now is lift. So I, was, I spent two hours in the gym lifting and running uh, every day. And then it kind of became a habit and I just added that to my training. All right, I wanted to ask you about the last fight to start off with. Made it to the finals on the short notice, the two knockouts, you get to the finals. There was the controversial stoppage. From then to now, do you have any different feelings about the stoppage, and what are your feelings about the stoppage? Uh, my, I mean, you know, I... I can't really complain about it anymore because it's not going to change. You know what I mean? It, it will happen, happen, and uh, uh, you just got to look from the past to kind of to look back at it and let it bother me because uh, you know it's in the past, and I'm going to keep moving forward. And you know, you, the only the only time you want to look back is to see how far you came. And um, so I try not to look back. But um, since you're asking me about it, it uh, you know it bothered me. It did bother me, but I mean it is what it is. I think referees just make mistakes, and he made a mistake that night, and. There's nothing you can do about it. Just look forward and keep going. I remember when it happened. I think I yelled so loud. I was in my office watching it. My girlfriend ran in. What happened? Something on fire? I was like, oh my god, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. Yeah. I got a lot, a lot of mixed emotions from it. You know, you get people, you know, bashing me online saying that, you know, that's what I get. That's what I deserve. And, you know, the, the referee made the right call. Then you have people that look at it from my point of view that it was a bad call. You should have let it go on. You know, I was winning two rounds to none. And you know, one way around from one round away from getting my title shot, but it's okay. You know, I'm back in the tournament and I have a, a chance to put myself over again. So, was there any doubt that you were going to be in this tournament? Did they tell you right away? Don't worry, you're back in the next one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bjorn actually came to my uh, locker room right after the fight and started asking me questions about the stoppage, and he was like, "Don't worry, I'm putting you right back in the tournament because that wasn't right." You know, we had the referee Mike and the Mike the ref. I gotta say that he has to get up, and you know, since you know, and then since I didn't, I was non responsive, that's why they stopped it. And uh, um, uh, Bjorn was like, That's not true because we have a mic, we would have heard him say something, we didn't hear him say anything, so I was, you know, it was a mistake, and we're giving you another chance. So, then being a finalist from the last tournament, coming into this tournament, do you feel like you're the favorite? Um, you know what, I I don't look at favorites like that. I mean, last time there was a favorite in the tournament, you, you saw what happened to him. So I don't, you know, put anybody or I won't put myself, you know what I mean, like on a pedestal because everybody's there, everybody's hungry. You could be a last-minute replacement like me, like I was and make it to the finals. So I don't look at that as a, you know what I mean, like a chip on my shoulder. I just, you know, I have a mission to accomplish and, you know, whether I'm a favorite or not, it, it's the same thing to me. Well, this time, though, you have the notice. You had the time to prepare. So what's that been like, having that time to prepare to get ready for the aspect of fighting three fights in such a short period of time? Um, I'm, I'm more mentally prepared for it. I mean, I was mentally prepared for my last fights, you know, coming into the tournament, just being on a – I was a, a well-trained. I mean, I was coming off some injuries, so I couldn't train the way I needed to train. But I was still prepared. I was uh, ready to fight anyone, you know, and uh, – so I was coming in there, no matter who they were going to put me against, I was uh, prepared to fight. So whether it was a tournament or not, I was ready. But now this time, I, I know how it's going to be. I know it's going to be back to back, and I'm just looking at it one fight at one fight at a time, at one fight at a time, and uh, and I'm ready for it. Like you said, you were up two rounds to nothing in that fight. A five fight 
win streak prior to that. So even because it was a controversial loss, do you feel you still have that momentum stuff still going in your favor? There was a lot of positives you were able to take away from that fight. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, um, I remember that <laughs> that that I, I, I could wrestle. You know what I mean? I have a wrestling background, and I never used it. You know, I always used it just to keep it on my feet. But I could go out there, and I always knew I could. You know, I'm I'm a pretty good wrestler. I'm a pretty good striker, and my jiu-jitsu is on point. You know, so um, when I had broke my hand, it kind of forced me to wrestle just to kind of steal the rounds and be a smarter fighter instead of going out there and just being a brawler. So now, you know, it kind of. Uh, uh, reminding me of my my skill set, and now I'm going into this fight with with all my skill set, not going in there just to you know knock people out. That fight coming on coming up, we're six days out from it. Taking on a guy coming all the way over from uh, England, Martin C. Four Stanton, only has one loss on his record. What are your thoughts on him as a fighter? Um. Anyone that fights, uh, you know, I respect them. You know what I mean? Because I know they, they, they give up, what, you know, their jobs, their everyday jobs to, to train their ass off and, you know, try to become a fighter and try to become a world champion and make a living off of it. So no matter who I'm going to fight, you know, my, I have respect for them. And uh, for him, you know, I, I feel bad for him that he got matched up with me first round. But, you know, like I said, I have respect for the guy. You know, he, he's well-rounded. He, he is, you know, really crisp stand-up. He looks like he's a pretty strong wrestler. And, um... And he usually, like, it looks like he likes to bully people, but I'm not one to be bullied. I've never been bullied in a fight. I do not see this kid bullying me at all. So I think I'm going to just uh, take it from him. So from a mental aspect, what kind of statement do you want to come out and make in this first round? Uh, I've been making statements this whole tournament, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to stop. So uh, we'll see what happens. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let my hands go like I usually do. And if it goes my way, you know, it'll end quick. Uh, if it doesn't go my way, I'll, I'll go out there and I'll just, you know, uh, steal the rounds from him. And if I get a submission, I get a submission. If I catch him, I catch him. If not, I'm going to make sure I destroy him every round just to let people know that, you know what I mean, if I have to go three rounds, I will beat you every round. And then wanted to get your thoughts on the champion, Michael Chandler. He's had two lightning quick victories in a row. What do you think about him and what a matchup, you know, with him would mean to you? You know, what's funny is I get asked that a lot, and, uh, you know, I have a whole tournament to go through before I uh, start thinking about him. You know, I try not to think about him. Uh, he's a great champion. You know, he's undefeated for a reason. The kid's strong, explosive, has fast hands, and he's getting better every fight. You know what I mean? So by the time I, you know, fight him, you know, hopefully I fight the best Michael Chandler, and, and you know, we'll see what happens. I think I match up really good with him with his the way he fights and the way I fight. I think I'll give him a lot of trouble just because, of you know, our styles, the way they're going to collide. I know no one wants to look too far forward, so what's it like doing that then on the three weeks in between? There's the quarterfinals, the semifinals, three weeks later, it's a small period of time and you've had a good amount of time to prepare for the quarterfinal round. How do you handle that getting ready if you make it to the semis? Um, it's, it's, it goes by fast, man. Uh, it, it almost gets to a point when you, you, know, when you make it to the finals, like you're sick of it because, like, when you get into training camps, it's uh, it's different than just training. You know, when you're training for fights, that you know, like grueling training, and you're cutting weight, and you're tired, and and you're training, you know, five six hours a day, three times a day, and you have to add your running, you have to add your weightlifting. So it's uh, it, it's pretty intense, you know. And I, I try to take my mind off of it by you know going to the beach every time I get a day off. You know, today I took my nephew out to the beach and just we just went on like a three mile run. Went swimming for a little bit, got a little ice bath, you know, swimming, and then uh, came back, and that's kind of my way of like pulling down. You know, thank God I live in California where, you know, we could do stuff like that. So, what else are you out there doing when you're trying to relax besides doing more work? Um, you know, what's funny is I try to take a day off, and like I said, I'll probably end up at the beach, and then if I go to the beach, I, I won't take a day off because I'll go out there and I'll make sure either I run for three to six miles or I'll, or I'll swim for a good hour or two and you know everybody knows swimming is like the best workout so my days off consist of still working out somehow some way unless unless you know I get sick or something I'm stuck in my bed all day and I know I can't leave then I'll just probably get up and go to the sauna and try to sweat it out so just always working the workaholic how then do you not overtrain? um you know what's funny is I I, I, I did overtrain this camp and 
I, I kind of forced myself to take uh, two days off a couple weeks ago. I had to do it twice because we, uh, me and my, my main teammate, Georgie Karkanyan, he just fought in World Series of Fighting, and he came off of a big win, and we, we both overtrained, and we kind of had to, had to like stay away from each other for two days and force each other to take days off because we, we both did kind of overtrain, you know, this camp. And I think it comes with, you know, with the pride. Is, you know, when you see you have a big prize ahead of you, you have, you know, you have no option but to train hard. You know, it's not like fighting these local shows where you're fighting for a thousand, two thousand dollars and training for three months. And, you know, it's, it's you don't look at the prize. But now we have a, a, a big prize and, you know, world championship, you know, championships ahead of us. So, you know, therefore, we, we push forward and we strive to be the best. What's that like having someone, a high level training partner around the same weight class and having that constant competition. It, it, it's, it's awesome because we have completely different styles, you know what I mean? I have reach, I have, uh, I have you know, bigger than him and he, he's shorter and we have two different styles and he, um, we push each other every day, you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's a competition kind of, but we push it out of respect, you know, we don't hurt each other and we, uh, uh, we, 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 also, we get better every day, we go to different camps, we always mix it up and and like it, it's awesome to have somebody that good, you know, pushing you every single day. And when I slack off, he'll push me. When he slacks off, I'll push him. So it's one or the other. We don't really give each other space to, to slack off. He won with the arm and guillotine. Watching it, I was kind of like, does he have it? You work, you train with him. Did you know right away he had it? If, if, if that kid grabs your neck, you're, 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 you're choked out. I don't care if the arm's in or not. And uh, you know it's funny. I was watching it because I went down. I was in. I went down to Vegas to uh, watch the Mayweather fight, and I uh, I had the whole bar change the channels, you know, to watch that. So I had the whole bar watching it, and it was me and some of my cousins we were watching. As soon as he locked it up, before he even jumped guard, I said, "I guarantee he's gonna tap this kid with it." And he jumps guard, and they're like, "No, no, it's coming out." I was like, "No, he's adjusting." I was like, "Watch," and then you know, and then he got it. I mean, the kid, kid stuff, you know, and he he has some moves that he's really good at, and. And he has a lot of them, and so, you know, when he has it, he has it, and if not, you're going to go to sleep. <laughs> Phenomenal finish. So we got both of you guys training together. That's got to be some awesome sparring sessions. You mentioned earlier the wrestling background. Uh, he always, uh... Oh, what you were going to say? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I had said you mentioned your wrestling background earlier. Do you have any other athletic background? Uh, I grew up playing soccer as a kid. You know, so when I was really young, my dad put me in a soccer. I mean, nothing, nothing major, but I grew up from like, honestly, like first, first grade. I was actually in Taekwondo for two years, and then I stopped doing that forever. And then I started soccer in like fifth grade up until uh, ninth grade, and then I started wrestling from ninth grade on. So when did the the MMA going into fighting? Where did that all come together? Um, I, I walked into the gym to sign up my little brother, uh, cause he liked to fight, street fight. So I was like, all right, you know, you're a tough kid. Let me put you in a boxing gym. So I went to go sign him up and the only gym in the area was, uh, uh, MMA gym. So he was like, you know, if you sign, if I sign up, you gotta stay with me. I'm not going to stay here by myself. And it was just a pro class at the time. So I was like, all right. So, you know, we both signed up and, uh, one thing led to another, you know, I stayed and he ended up you know, quitting after a while, you got tired of it, and I, I did it just to keep me busy, because, you know, I, I like to stay, you know, working out, doing something, you know, and uh, it kept me busy, and now I'm here. So, was it the love for it, the passion for it, or was that something that built over time, or was it right away? No, it, it was right away. I mean, um, I've always been a fan of the sport, and uh, when I saw that, you know, I didn't know there was even gyms in my area, so when I saw that there was one, I was like, oh, it was pretty cool, and then I they threw me in a pro class, and I was hanging with the pro fighters that were there, you know, when I first started. So I said, man, this, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really competitive. So, you know, like, I'll push myself, even if it's bike riding. Somebody's bike riding, and they're going to make me ride with them. I'm going to push myself to, to be one of the best bike riders out there if I have to be. So when I knew it was, you know, I like one-on-one -on -one sports. I don't, I'm a fan of football, but I don't like depending on my team to carry me. I don't like depending on my team to, you know, I could do play my best, but we could still lose, and that, that doesn't sit good in my book. You know, if I lose a fight, it's because of me. It's not because of anybody else. It's because of my lack of training. So that's why I, I liked it so much. When did you find out you had that power in your hands, and what was your what was the feeling like for you when you knocked someone out the first time? Um, it actually happened, I'll say, uh, 
because uh, I was afraid of boxing when I first started. Not afraid, but I didn't like to get punched, so I'd always just take people down, like during the MMA tra training. And I'll say about maybe a year into training, I finally started putting on the, the gloves because my coach was like, "If you want to fight a pro, you have to." No, it was not a year, maybe five months, because I had a pro fight coming up, and I haven't, I didn't even spar for that fight. I ended up sparring after my first pro fight. I had never sparred, and uh, after the fight, you know, we're training. That I had to put the gloves on. And I think I dropped somebody, uh, my teammate, with a jab, and I didn't even know how to punch. You know, I just and I dropped him with a jab, and I, and I was like, man, I gotta, I can't hit guys that hard. I noticed I was starting to hit people when they were falling, and I was like, I gotta hold back. So I really, you know, started holding myself back in training, and I was still hurting people when I was holding back. So I was like, man, you know, in, in a fight, I know if I really let my hands go, I'm gonna start hurting people, and, and I started doing it, and it started working. <laughs> and then what was your excitement level like? What was that feeling like when you started doing that? Oh, it was awesome. I'm telling you, like, I, I dropped my teammate with a jab, and I was like, holy crap. Like, I felt bad, but I felt good, because I was like, wow, I just, you know, I, I didn't even hit him hard, and the kid fell, you know, and then I did it again, just to see, it. I was like, maybe it was a fluke, and then, like, you know, a couple weeks later, I did it again with, like, a left hook, and I was like, man, if I let my right go, I'm really going to hurt people, and then I started letting my right go a little bit, and started dropping people, and I was like, okay, I got to hold this back, because this is, you know, either I'm throwing too hard, or or something's going on, and you know, now I finally, you know, I learned how to punch right, and I, I know how to control them, and it, it's cool. It's, it's pretty cool. So what right now has been your biggest aspect of the game that you've wanted to improve in? Um, I, I, just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to improve in everything. To be honest, you know what I mean. Like I know, I know my boxing is really sloppy, you know. So I'm really trying to, you know, crisp it up a little bit. Uh, my jiu-jitsu has always been pretty good, but I'm really starting to, you know, add like little little adjustments to 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 my game, so I can start adding more submissions to my to to, to my fights. And like I said, I started off with the wrestling background, but it's something I kind of steered away from when I started knocking people out. So I started using my wrestling just to stay on my feet, but now I started really. Uh, really getting in there and scrambling with people and creating scrambles just to end up in better positions just to, just to better my game because you know when you steer away from something for so long you start losing it and uh, I noticed I was doing that with my jiu-jitsu and my wrestling because I was focusing a lot on my hands so now I kind of just try to push everything every day that I train and then right now Bellator, the tournament ahead of you. How much do you like being in that tournament format, being able to control your destiny? Uh, it's awesome. You know, you have a tournament of guys. Uh, you see everybody that's there. You know you're going to fight the winner, so you're not going to fight somebody coming off of a loss. You know what I mean? Unless you lose, you might find them not in the tournament. But as long as you're in the tournament and you're winning, you're going fight, to fight a winner. You know what I mean? And it, it feels good to beat somebody that's on a winning streak. And then to keep going and, and, and win a tournament, and just to, to be a champ in the tournament, and then to get that title shot, because it's I know I know as long as I win, the title shot is three fights away, and I know that hundred percent. It's not four fights, it's not six fights, it's not five fights, it's not you know what I mean. It's gonna be three fights away, and the fourth fight's gonna be a title shot as long as you win. So that's it, it's awesome to know, and it it's cool because it makes you train that much harder, knowing that you have the title shot there as long as you win these three fights. Love that tournament format myself. We find all these fighters, someone rises to the top. They always end up being great fights. But got a big question to ask for you. Now, Sunday, know you care about this. Who wins, San Francisco or Indianapolis? Man, I'm always going for San, for San Francisco. I just went for them against the Seahawks, and we got smashed. But, but I'm always going for them. I mean, I'm not a crazy football fan. Uh, I can't tell you too much even about the team, but I've just been a fan since you know I was in fifth grade. And that's just kind of the team I stuck by, win or lose, you know, I'm going to go for him. <laughs> Had to throw that one out there. Going to be a tough game for them. For you, wanted to give you a minute to thank people. I thank you for the time. Uh, shout out to people that have been helping you, sponsors, all that good stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. You know, it's always good to get, you know, interviews and, you know, get things out. And uh, also, I want to say thanks to one of my main sponsors, which is uh, Thrive Foods Direct. They, they, they've been keeping me healthy this whole training camp. They send me my food every Friday, and that's the food I've been eating to help me get down, to help me lean up, help me put more muscle on as well. You know, me being a vegetarian, it's kind of hard to, to, to stay, you know, to keep all that, to, to get all that protein that I don't get from meat. 
you know, when I try to cook myself because I don't cook too good. So they, they, they send, you know, all the food I need to, to diet and stay healthy and keep me pushing. And also thank you to my training camp down you know, Millennium MMA, my coaches Romy, Batiste, and my teammates Georgie, and all the guys out there. Thank you for the time, everyone listening. Bellator 101, it's this Friday. Spike TV, Syed Awad, he's going to be back in the lightweight tournaments, the quarterfinal round. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. All right, thank you, brother. Thank you.